Hello and welcome. Today we'll be talking about the TP10 from Wubin. This is a three in one pen light combo. It features a tungsten glass breaker on one side. And if you unscrew the element from the flashlight side, you'll get a Schneider black gel ink refill. The light is going to be a Cree XP G3 LED. It features two modes, a high mode for 130 lumens at 40 minutes. And it's got a low mode for three lumens for six hours. It's also IP68 rated for underwater. The weight of the whole unit is going to be about 40 grams or 1.41 ounces with the battery. Dimensions are going to be 153.5 millimeters by 13.5 millimeters or 6.04 inches by 0.53 inches in length and diameter. It's also drop rated for 1.5 meters. The outside is made out of aluminum and it's anodized. Here on the table we can see the Wubin TP10. And then we have the micro USB charging cable that it comes with the spare O-rings in a plastic bag here for the units, the manual and the box that it comes in. Here we can see the Wubin TP10. It's nice coating of anodization. It's smooth. We have the lighting element on the top here with the charging port right underneath the switch part here. And it comes apart here also by the clip where you can access the 10180 battery and replace it. Also down here, we have another port where you can unscrew the second part of the pen so you can write in the dark if you want it to. We have the tungsten glass breaker here at the tip here. We have an O-ring on the side here for stability. And we also have the Schneider ink refill cartridge right here and the O-ring here. Now, I don't know if I can replace this cartridge on the pen. I'm assuming I can somehow. I'm not sure how to take this apart and access that. I'm assuming there's probably another way to pull this out and put one back in. If not, it's going to be pretty limited in terms of writing. But we do have the O-ring on the pen side here as well for stability once you screw it back in to stabilize the unit to use it for a glass breaker. Now, personally, I would relegate this to just a backup glass breaker as it requires a full range of motions from your body. In other words, you have to hit the glass dead on on the tip here to make use of it and that's assuming you don't have a broken arm or not in an accident so purely a uh, aesthetic in my opinion and not too practical also in my opinion i probably would just get one of those spring-loaded glass breakers you push a button and this thing flies out and breaks the glass so that'd be more useful in my opinion but it is nice to have as an additional feature on the pen if impractical now we're going to do some writing tests with this in a little bit too as well the pocket clip here is not too bad it's got a nice rigidity to it it stays in one place so that's pretty good let's go ahead and open up the cap here to reveal the charging port for the 10180 battery inside we do have o-rings here on the charging port as well to maintain that ip68 waterproof rating here's the head unit it's not captive so if you take it off to recharge it don't forget where you place your head unit inside we can see the cree xp g3 led inside there with the tir optics it's a decent little led in there it's a common one for the, a lot of these uh what i call pill lights meaning they're very small like a pill and you just use them and recharge them it's nice to have that kind of feature in a pen light combo i'm a big fan of pen lights personally so it works very well i've charged this up to a full maximum capacity so when it's charging it'll have a red led here and then it'll turn green when it's done charging it uses a micro usb charging cable which is kind of a bummer nowadays with usb c being out but not so much of a big deal and we'll go ahead and screw this down we'll access the modes because it's a turn switch here and it has two different modes a low mode again that'll run for about six hours they claim and a high mode that'll run for about 40 minutes at, at about 130 lumens the low mode's about three lumens i believe or thereabouts we're going to get some tests on that in a little bit too as well but that is the modes and how you access it the ui now what we're going to do is take apart the battery casing unit on here too also it has a o-ring on here and has some decent threads on it but i wouldn't want to knock the threads around too much it's got a little bit of grease on the threads too so here's the 10180 battery the wubin brand it's 70 milliamp hours so it's a very small capacity i'd be surprised if this thing lasts longer than an hour on either modes frankly it probably lasts about 15 minutes on the high mode and maybe about an hour or two on the low modes but we'll do some further testing pending that and even if you take off this battery unit here uh, you can't access or take off the permanently installed pocket clip which is kind of nice in my opinion i kind of like that 
So let's go ahead and get some beam shots of this and some measurements. Okay, we're back shooting an aperture 7.1, 2500 for the ISO. We have 5000K for the white balance. And we're shooting at 24 frames per second on the Panasonic GH2 with a 14 to 42 millimeter lens. Here we have the Opal Light Master Pro in my measuring. We're measuring the Lux, the CCT, and the CRI. We're going to hold the light on in low mode here at about 2.5 feet above the table into the sensor. We're getting about 214 Lux at about 53 to 5400 CCT, about 73 CRI. Now let's do the high mode here. And now we bump up to about 3500, 3600 maybe 3,700 lux thereabouts, and about the same amount of CCT and CRI as well for the, for the rating here. Let's go ahead and move this off the table to look at the beam profile briefly. Here on high at about 130 lumens or so. It's got a nice pattern here. There's no real artifacts that I can see when I dip it back down. It's got a nice hot spot in the center, but not too focused. It's nice spread. A good little light for a pen light, in my opinion. Even the low mode is pretty useful for nighttime operations, for a white light. It's not too bright. It gets the job done, in my opinion. And I like the fact that you can take the lighting unit off the pen, which is really important, and you can use both ends to see what you're writing. So that's kind of nice to have. And I like the fact that it's a 10-180 battery. Okay, here we are with some drawing paper here and I draw for fun and I'm an amateur artist. I have some 24 pound WB Mason paper. I'm going to go ahead and attach it to my drawing board here and do some testing with the insert here, the Schneider gel. So we took off the protective cap on the tip here. I'm going to go ahead and draw some lines. So I lift it up here, so that skip uh, is my fault. Let's do that again. Light pressure. Runs very nicely. Medium pressure. And then finally, heavy pressure. And we're going to do super light pressure, just with the weight of the pen on an angle. So we do have some thin spots with the laying of the ink, but it writes pretty well and fairly nicely. Let's go ahead and try drawing something here real quick, around the spot. We'll try to get an eye in there. Now I'm not very good with ink drawing, but it feels like I can almost maybe use this for fun sketching if there is a way to replace the ink cartridge and not waste it necessarily. So, it writes well, it writes well. And ignore the extra L there. <laughs> TP10, Wubin. And there you have it. The uh, ink cartridge, the Schneider one, works very well for laying down ink on a 24-pound paper. it probably work very well on maybe a 20-pound paper as well for WB Mason or some other type of copy printer paper. Now if you're using different paper with different tooths and uh, configurations, cold press or whatever, uh, it might react differently. So take that with a grain of salt what you see here. To access the ink cartridge, you can unscrew the tip here. Be careful not to breach the ink cartridge or the tip as you would get ink on your fingers like I did. It has a nice little spring here. And we can take that out, disassemble the whole unit here. And we have our Schneider. That's a Gellian 39, or Gellian 39, if you want to pronounce it that way. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But it is a black 0.4 millimeter based gel type of ink. ISO says 27668-2, Germany. And we have the barcode here. In case you're wondering for refills for this, it's a 40046750269586958. Okay, let's go ahead and put this back together.
disassembly and reassembly seems very straightforward and easy to do. There's no noted O-ring on the actual threading for the accessing of the ink cartridge of the pen here. And it writes like usual and normal. And that's how you replace the cartridge on the TP10. Overall, I like the Wubin TB10. It's a good rechargeable EDC pen light. It features a good amount of options and replaceable functions on it, namely the ink refill and the 10180 lithium ion battery. It also features the micro USB charging port. Although it's not USB C, it's still a decent port to use for an EDC carry. As an EDC item, I want to be able to recharge my items in the field without having to bring extra chargers and also swap out batteries potentially, So, which I can do that with this. I can buy a bunch of other 10180 batteries, swap it out, and charge up the other battery if I want to, or I can just charge it in the unit itself. Now the Cree XPG emitter inside, it's something to write home about, but it does a fairly good job of showing what's in front of you, and for a light of this size, it is more than enough. As far as recommendations for upgrades, I'd say maybe we could do away with the tungsten glass breaker tip. I've seen a lot of these on pens, and I do question their practicality, especially in situations where you might be disabled with your arms or your faculties. You won't always be able to hit that window directly on point and with enough force to break it. So you're probably better off buying a more practical glass breaker item, perhaps one with a like spring inside of it so that it just springs out and shoots the window. That being said, it's not necessarily negative to have it on there too, so you can use it when you're fully functional as well. We do realize that. But in my opinion, I'd probably replace this and add just like an elbow style actuator for the ink just to come out. I would still keep the ability to detach the light unit from the writing unit like they do in the Open 2 and in the Open Pro from Olay. But this kind of reminds me of the Klaus TP20 titanium pen light. It's very similar in its feature set and its idea of unscrewing the uh, revealing the pen unit. In this case, this comes out of the storage unit up here instead of being fully capped out like the TP20. So there are some differences. The pocket clip is non-mobile. It's in place, which is fine. I like that it has holes in it up here. So that's pretty good. You can attach like a little mini cord there and attach it to like a carabiner or something so you don't lose it while it's on your person. So that's pretty nice to have that there. It's also got these two little open windows down here. I'm not sure why that's there, but it kind of works, I guess. Overall, though, it's it's a nice light. It comes in at about $36.99 on the Flashlight Go website. And these are the people who sent this out to me for review. So I want to say thank you for that. I do appreciate it. Overall, I would recommend it because it gets all the functions done for a relatively competitive price. I do know that there's other flashlight brands out there, pen light combos in particular, that do make it a uh, similar feature set like this for around the same price. So do your shopping around. I haven't got my hands on them yet, so maybe I will in the future and I can compare these two or several in the future, several different models for you. And that's all I have to say about the Wubin TP10. It's my first Wubin product, product, so I'm pretty impressed with the overall quality and the fit and finish of it. Thanks for watching, guys, and enjoy your day.